Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. Joining me today is Chancellor Nick Zeppos, and we are marking your first official year as Vanderbilt's eighth chancellor. So well, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, it's, it's just great to be here, Amy, and I look forward to uh, many years ahead and certainly uh, discussing this very, very exciting and interesting and challenging year that we've had. You've definitely had a lot of big successes. The Commons opening, the expanded aid program, and of course the Music City Bowl win, which we're all thrilled about. Um, but you've also had some challenges, challenges that everyone in the world is dealing with right now, and that's tied to the economy. So first of all, I'd like to start by asking, how is Vanderbilt doing in light of this economic situation? Well, let's go back to mention these tremendous successes. Yes. Because well, in, this time, in these times of challenge, we have to focus on what do we do? What's our mission? Right. Who are we? Mm -hmm. And we brought in the most talented, diverse, interesting, balanced group of freshmen in 2008 into mm -hmm. a transformative community that builds on Vanderbilt, the idea of friendship and community. And uh, along the way, uh, we started in, in the midst of what I think is the biggest economic challenge that mm -hmm. America and the world have faced and universities are facing really since the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. We started a new aid program and then we decided we would win a bowl game. Yes. So uh, <laughs> challenging times indeed, mm -hmm. but when you think of what Vanderbilt stands for, what Vanderbilt does, mm -hmm. it's been an incredible year thus far. Definitely. So let's talk about how incredible it really has been and the challenges that we have. Um, there is no question that America and the world, and I am not an economic historian, I'm not even a historian, uh, uh, we are really going through some extraordinary challenges. Definitely. And Vanderbilt is not immune from these. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you that our financial strength is very, very powerful. Our, what we do in terms of healing people, in terms of patients coming to mm -hmm. say, save the life of my child, make my father be able to play golf again. I want to go to the best college in the world, but I need some help. Mm -hmm. Who's going to discover how to cure cancer? We are excelling at those things, Great. and we continue to excel. But this is a very, very challenging time, and it really has forced us to say, who are we and what do we do? Mm -hmm and how do we prioritize? So I would say that I hope for better times. Uh, we all I, do. We all do, and you know, Vanderbilt is going to be meeting its mission and thriving through these challenging times. So do you think the expanded aid program will be affected by this economic turbulence? Well, it will be affected because it will be more, even more meaningful mm -hmm. for families and young people. And we all believe in the American dream. Mm -hmm. And while I think that our country needs to do various things, and I'm not an elected official and I have no good ideas, but I will tell you one thing. If you want to build America, mm -hmm. if you want to improve health care, if you want to create that pathway to the middle class and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. it starts in education. Absolutely. So we are devoted to our aid package. Uh, my peer universities are going through tremendous strain. Mm -hmm. And these are, like Vanderbilt, some of the strongest, greatest universities have been here for hundreds of years. Right. They are continuing their aid packages because access to Vanderbilt, access to the American dream is what we're about. So uh, it will continue. We will have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. We received a transformative $20 million anonymous gift uh, in the fall for this aid initiative. Um, people are struggling, but you know what? People are still giving to Vanderbilt. That's and wonderful. so I'm very, very proud to be part of an institution that has said, these are tough times. How will this affect Vanderbilt? It will affect it by making us better. Mm -hmm. Now, I always think that in times like this, history shows that big creative ideas come from times of trial. What would you say to Vanderbilt students and other young people out there who are going through this type of crisis probably for the first time in their lives? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, and I've thought about it quite a bit as I reflect on my life and mm -hmm. when I went to college and when I went to law school and 
You know, I started college um, in 1972 at the University of Wisconsin, which I would say was not a quiet place to go to college. <laughs> and it was uh, really the, the Vietnam War era. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I noticed all the turbulence and things mm -hmm. like that, but what I really did was devote myself to those things that I found I loved, which was the study of history and eventually the study of law. Yeah. I went in to practice law, and uh, there were 20% uh, interest rates and hyperinflation and stagflation, and mm. I moved to Washington, D.C., and I saw the American unemployment rate get to about 10.5%. Mm -hmm. I graduated my first class from Vanderbilt Law School in 1990, my second class in 1991, as the American financial system, nothing like today, but the American banking system went insolvent. Right. I became the provost and vice chancellor as we suffered the Trade Tower tragedy mm. of September 11th, and then there was this thing called the Internet Bubble. and I like um, that. <laughs> so I will not minimize what we are through. As I look at these students... I have a very, very hopeful reaction, mm -hmm. and I also have a very kind of protective feeling. So let me start with the hopeful. These are the future. These kids are the future. Mm -hmm. That's why we're bringing them here. Ideas, innovation in energy, health care, building community, right. curing diseases. That's what our mission is. So if, if you cannot come on this campus and say, for all the terrible things, we have to do our best intergenerationally, mm -hmm. just as was done in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. We must do our best, but we must nourish this next generation and say, we are going to provide you access to research mm -hmm. at the cancer center, at the children's hospital. We are going to have small classes with intensive writing. We are going to have entrepreneurship classes because we must train the leaders who will make our world better as right. we ourselves try to do that. But the, but the real goal we have here is I look out and I'm hopeful. And when I have a child say, I love my Spanish class, or I love my economic history class, and thank you for a scholarship. You know, we are in a challenging time, but America is a great nation. Absolutely. And it will thrive, and it will thrive largely because of what we and other colleges and universities do. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about the protective side a little bit, which is I don't want an 18-year-old child to worry about, you know, what is happening to 30-year treasury rates? <laughs> right. I don't want these 20-year-old kids to, they're going to go out into a tough environment. My seniors, mm -hmm. and I'm spending a lot of time talking to my seniors, and they're going to go out into a tough job market. Right. But, you know, I tell them you're going to be in your, hope, find your passion you'll, mm -hmm. and find it for 50 years. Right. And I'm 30 years into my professional career. Here's what I lived through. This is part of the education. It builds character, mm -hmm. and it will make you find what I may love to do that I might not have looked at before. Right. You know, go live overseas. Go teach teach English in Zaire. Mm -hmm. You know, volunteer. Do Teach for America. So I don't want these youngsters to say, oh, my goodness gracious, you know, what is happening to the S&P today? Right. I want to prepare them for their passion have them find that passion, and then go out and serve humanity. We'll be fine. And I think Vanderbilt's a great place for them to be. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And you can see and read a full interview with Chancellor Zeppos in the Vanderbilt View. Thank you very much. Thank you.